number six from the 2013 Higher Maths Paper 2. A trigonometrical integration, but not one where you have to evaluate it. It's one where you have the answer and you define one of the initial inputs, one of the limits. So, just proceed as a normal integration. That would be, well, it's ready to go there. Sine would have come from cos, but unfortunately it would have been a negative cos. So it'll have to be negative 5 cos 3x. And then remembering that's the sine of not just x, but of a linear function of x. So divide by its derivative. So since the derivative of 3x is 3, I'll have to divide by 3. I'll just pop that over here. So I've got negative 5 upon 3 cos 3x. There's no point putting in plus c because I'm going to evaluate it twice. I'm going to work it out at a and work it out at 0. Now it's just a case of what will I do with that negative 5 upon 3 when I work it out. And this answer should come to 10 upon 3. Well, that's going to be a common factor in both of these. If I was to write this out, I would have negative 5 thirds of cos of 3a minus negative 5 thirds of cos of 3 times 0. Since the negative 5 is appearing in both of them, it would probably be handier to keep it out. So I've got negative 5 upon 3 of that minus negative 5 upon 3 of cos of 3 times 0 equaling 10 upon 3. These brackets are getting a bit cumbersome there. The handy thing about taking that out just now is I can immediately just pop that over the other side. Multiply both sides by 3, divide both sides by 5. Negative 5, rather. So I've just got cos 3a minus cos 0 would equal, well, spell it out here, times, take the 3 across and multiply if you like it that way, over negative 5. So that part's going to come to negative 2. 3's cancel and 5 into 10 cancels twice. So that means I've got, well, should have been implications because I've already got an equal to sign. That means I've got cos 3a minus whatever the cos of 0 is. Now let's have a little graph here. Cosine graph, that's going to look like that. Cosine at 0, that's 1. So that's just minus 1. So now I'm down to cos 3a equals, take that 1 across and add, and we'll make it negative 1. Well, set that out. Negative 2 plus 1, which equals negative 1. And the last part is, well, negative 1's a point in the graph. I'll write this bit down, maybe unnecessarily. So 3a will be inverse cos of that. Now this only happens once. You only get down to negative 1, remember it's in radians, halfway along at pi. So that means 3a should equal pi. You do get an answer again, but you'd have to wait for another wavelength to get there. There would be another answer 2 pi later on at 3 pi. And sometimes you need to consider them, because if I'm going to divide by 3, it might bring it into range. I'll put this in a bracket, it doesn't actually, I don't actually need it here. I've got that, or I could have 3 pi. When I divide by 3, I've then got pi upon 3, which is fine, it's inside the range. But if I was to divide that by 3, I'd get pi, and pi's not included, because it doesn't have the equal to. So I could have put in bracket, or, but maybe I shouldn't, or just pi, but that's not included. So my answer is a equals pi upon 3 only, since a is less than pi.